Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode today, we're going to explore with demonstrations how to set up the storage API collections on the MCS side, that is within the user interface. Thanks for joining me, I'm Chris Muir from Oracle's mobile platform team. Okay, so for the purposes of demonstration, let's imagine today that we're going to build a mobile app for children at primary or lower school to teach them how to spell. Now, as spelling is one of the more dreary exercises for kids, you know, you just have to ask my daughters that, we're going to build an app that combines their love of Star Wars, yes, my girls love Star Wars, with spelling in an app called, wait for it, Spell Wars. Now, we're going to pump up this educational experience by allowing students to compete by recording their scores on a shared scoreboard or leaderboard, as well as allowing children to personalise their mobile experience by giving them options to upload their favourite avatar picture and set their nickname. Now, as the scoreboard needs to be updated and viewable by all the users of our app, we must maintain this scoreboard off device. In turn, kids will be kids and they may accidentally delete our mobile app from their school iPad or iPhone or Android device. Therefore, for their personalization preferences, we need to make sure that these are stored off device as well, where they can be safely restored when the app is reinstalled and they log in. Both requirements here actually sound like a great case for Oracle's mobile cloud storage API. Well, of course, it's going to make sense, right? We wouldn't be giving these to you otherwise. So let's dig into how we could build these out using the MCS storage API in the rest of this episode. So first things first, like all the other platform APIs in MCS, we must have a mobile backend to expose the storage API through. So here I've created one of the same name as our mobile app called Spell Wars. On opening the Spell Wars mobile backend via the storage page, we'll create our first collection. In creating a first collection called Scoreboard, note the name has no spaces or special characters. As the scoreboard must be viewable and updated by all our students, we're also going to make it shared amongst all our mobile users. In the properties page, we'll give read access to mobile users with the Spell Wars guest role that I created earlier on, allowing these users to view the scoreboard. Alternatively, the Spell Wars student role, well, we'll use that to give to the actual students using our app who are competing in spelling competitions, and this will give them the ability to not just read from the scoreboard, but also write their own updates. Now we return to the Spell Walls mobile backend and create a second collection called User Preferences. And because it needs to store individual details about each student, such as their avatar pick and nickname, we'll set this collection to Isolated. In turn, we'll grant the same privileges of the scoreboard collection that we created earlier. Note because this is an isolated collection, we also have privileges for granting read all and read write all to allow other users to see the isolated collections. Because this app is for students, it'd be a good idea to grant teachers the ability to see everything and fix inappropriate student preferences. So we'll allocate the pre-created teacher role, Spell Wars Teacher, to the read write all privilege to achieve this. From here, the collections are pretty much done and ready to be used, though of course they're empty. So let's now look at some of the APIs that are available for manipulating and testing these collections from the MCS user interface. Returning to the list of storage APIs published through our mobile backend, notice the storage API link at the top. This opens a test facility within the MCS user interface, showing us firstly, all the different REST APIs we can invoke to access our collections and objects. Let's first invoke the get collections call to see what it returns. In expanding the authentication section for the get collections operation, in order to invoke a REST API via the MCS user interface, we always need to specify the mobile backend, version, user, and password to call the API. So I'll plug in our mobile backend details, plus the username of Little Joe, who's one of our students, and his password that I created earlier. Little Joe is one of our students with the Spell Wars student role, and therefore we'll be able to execute this call to the collection. From here in selecting the test endpoint button, 
the page is updated to show both the request which would be the equivalent of what our external mobile app would send to our exposed storage api endpoint and the response which in its json payload reveals to you what you already know that the spellwalls mobile backend has two collections also note at the top of the page the default api designer test credentials option that's worth selecting to save us having to enter the same credentials again and again such as the mobile backend username and password while we continue our testing of the following APIs. Now let's select the get collections collection name option supplying a collection name that we've created and see what it gives as a result. As the authentication details are now defaulted for us we don't need to set that again but in the parameters section that we expand we do need to set the collection name so let's specify user preferences. Having done that on selecting the test endpoint button you can see the response which returns the metadata about the collection user preferences but does not return the data contained within the collection itself in order to get the actual data for user preferences we finally execute a get on collections user preferences objects And as we can see in the response, we get uh, uh, oh, well, an uh, empty response. Because as we remember, there's no items in this collection user preferences yet. We haven't uploaded anything. Right, so let's solve this by uploading a JSON file containing our mobile user's preferences and their avatar picture. Now we could do this by calling post collections user preferences objects, but on calling this REST API, MCS will automatically generate the object's ID for us. We don't want that. We want to specify our own object ID. So instead we will call put on collections user preferences objects, which allows us to not only specify the collection name as one of the parameters, that being user preferences, but also the object ID as part of the URL. So first of all, we'll upload a JSON file named preferences.json, which will contain details about our student. So for example, first name Joe, last name Smith, nickname Little Joe, age six. Having done this in the response, we can see the file has been successfully uploaded. If we now return to the get collection user preferences object endpoint and test this, we can see that the object is in the list. And if we execute get collections user preferences objects forward slash preferences JSON, remember that's our object ID, we then get the actual original file back with the first name, last name, and nickname of little Joe. In turn, if we return to put collections user preferences objects object ID, we can upload an avatar PNG of little Joe with the object ID avatar.png. If we then specifically get that avatar PNG back, you will see the base64 encoded images result, as well as the content type set to the MIME type of image PNG. Now it's worth noting if we then execute the get collections user preferences objects call with another user such as little Annie rather than little Joe, who also has the Spell Wars student role, by setting the authentication options on the get call to little Annie, note how no items are returned. That's because earlier on with the user preferences collection, we set this to an isolated collection and the objects are not shared across the different collections. While we're at it, it's worth noting as an MCS user, if you return to the mobile backend storage page and open the specific storage API, you can actually see a list of all the objects stored, including its metadata, 
and if you want to you can download the files by simply clicking on them. Great, so that gives you a fair idea of what's involved in building with the MCS Storage API. Now in the next episode we're going to give you an introductory look at testing the Storage API so you get a feel for how you'd actually do this. And this will build up your knowledge on the end-to-end -end MCS concepts. So hope you enjoyed this episode today. Hopefully see you in the next episode very soon.